Although it would be totally awesome to throw your A-liner off a crane or a bridge, this is really about replacing the bungee cord on the roof of your trailer. I also am going to address anything about rubbing on the sides. I've got a new fix for that as well. Enjoy. So certainly the most practical way of replacing the uh, bungee cord on your A-frame trailer is to get one, a new one from the manufacturer itself. Most major companies supply them. You can probably go on, online and get them for a few dollars. But what happens if you're in the middle of nowhere or if you're only in a small little town and you need to replace it right now because it's broken and, and you're not, it's not safe to use your trailer. And that's what I did. This is what mine was like before I replaced it. It was ready to go, not safe. I wasn't going to wait. I needed to replace it. And this is the way I did it. Old trailers are like old houses. Once you start fixing things, it just seems it never ends. And I've got a lot of work to do on my old trailer. The two things I wanted to tackle today were the fact that the two mating parts of the roof rubbing together. The, uh, the initial design was to have, uh, they had like a vinyl or, or, or a mylar pads that were on the inside and the outside, which to me was a total fail. The glue would, would uh, become unglued, they'd fall off, and then there's nothing. Uh, I did a little band-aid solution of putting a little mylar here, but again, you can see that's not going to last. That's not a solution. So I'm going to try something different on that. And also with the bungee cords. This bungee cord is worn. It's going to fail. And it's failing because it's rubbing up against the latch here. So first thing I'm going to do with this bungee cord is I'm going to remove it. Uh, that way I can size it, see if I can find an alternative bungee cord, and uh, go from there. So uh, looks like it's bolted on and riveted. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so the top part was just riveted on. I had to remove the rivet with a drill. And the rest is just glued. Let's be able to pull that out. Ah, there we go. So here, here's the existing bungee. It was, uh, it was on there by screws on this part, but I got a feeling the original was by rivet. And it was by rivet in the top part. So there we go. Uh, I've got the size and I got the thickness. Let's see what I can find. What I did is I went to my local auto supply and I bought a six piece bungee cord kit for about the equivalent of nine or ten dollars US. And in that it had two bungees which were longer than 54 inches which is the, uh, the length of the original. So I'm going to use these two bungees. I'm just going to replace one now, see how it works. It's actually a little bit thicker, but uh, that could actually be an advantage instead of a disadvantage. But let's see how that works when I put it in place. So I've got the new bungee through the holes on the roof. This is the old one. Um, I think I said this was 54 inches. It's actually 57 inches. Um, this one I haven't cut yet. I'm, I've, I've left it a little longer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remount it. The original spot was right here, which rubs up against the latch. I'm just going to move it this way just a little bit. That'll make this a little shorter, but it should still work. There's a lot more flex in the original, in the new cord than there is in the original one. So having that extra flex, I should be okay. But I'm not going to cut the lengths off until I've got this mounted in place and I compare it with the existing one that's still on the other side. Once I have that true and everything seems good, then I'll trim these off to the appropriate length and, and uh, make it permanent. Now instead of rivets, I'm going to use uh, machine screws this time. I've got some number 10s that will go down here on the side. And these ones in the ends, I'm using number 14s uh, with hexes on the ends. A uh, little bit more secure but chances are these will go off and on again as I'm doing other modifications and as they wear so 
rivets is not a is, is not a good idea. I'm not going to put that in permanently. Now this I'm just truing up based on the other one. Really approximate. Okay, that seems pretty tight. Take all the stuff off the roof and we'll see how that works. So I can't get it all in, so this is a good excuse to use my little HD sport camera. Set up right like that. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Seems to work. Might be a little tight. I think I'll loosen it off a little bit and it should be fine. So now the bungees are replaced. The next thing to tackle is the wear along the edge from these two mating parts coming together. Um, the original uh, nylon strips, I'm not going to do that. I tried that and I don't think it was a very good idea. My idea is roller transfer bearings. These are nylon bearings or ball bearings in a casing and what I want to do is I'm going to drill holes and put them along this edge where the contact is is right now. So let's drill some holes and I'll find out if my theory works. Okay there we go. Well, the smart thing to do is stop at one. So then I only have one hole to refill. Okay. Looks like it fits. So the first thing to check after I put that in place is to see if there's any interference. So I'm going to take this brace out and see if I can shut it. So far so good. Take another brace out. I think it's good. I'm going to put the other ones in place. Okay, so all the, uh, the damage and rubbing is from the end to about 27 inches. So what I did is I put marks about six and a half inches apart. That way I can put four more and I'll have five transfer bearings on this side. a lot of mess. It's all that styrofoam in there. Whew. Anyway, got the holes drilled. Now I can put the bearings in place. Now I'm not going to glue these in yet. 
until it's been tested and true. There they go. Okay, first test. Feels nice and smooth. Okay, so I've put the roof up and down several times and I don't see any issues with either the bungee cords or the transfer bearings, so I'm going to put them in place permanently. For the bungee cords, I'm going to use 3M Hybrid Adhesive Sealant. It's 4000 UV. It's a little bit more expensive than just silicone, but I think it's a lot better for the purpose. And I'm going to put it all around the insides of, uh, of these brackets that hold the uh, bungee cords in place. And I'm also going to actually do a little filing here. I don't want any sharp edges on these, on these brackets so that uh, the cord gets frayed. So I filed away the corners of that bracket just so that they won't wear up against the bungee cord. But I also took some white duct tape and placed it around where it's going to join the side here just again to prevent any marring or fraying of the of the bungee now i can put the glue on so i had a little change of heart those original screws that i put in those machine screws didn't have enough oomph to uh to compress so i'm switching to a two inch stainless steel screw with nut that goes right through the frame and uh, that should uh, compress it well washer on the end see the adhesive is extremely messy so this is probably the hardest part so for the second side I become just a little bit smarter. What I did is I positioned this in first and then I'll squeeze the caulking in because the other side was a really nasty mess. Much better. So I've given the uh, marine adhesive a couple of days to dry so it should be fully cured now. So the last step is just cutting off the stubs of these bungees so it doesn't interfere when the roof comes down. Okay, that should be it. I've already done the other one, so let's see if it closes. And Looks like it's got a good seal. No interference. We're good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I will have more modifications and repairs coming up. So uh, always check back, and uh, happy camping.